Peter books, they talk about 5,000 years. But in the suttas, the Buddha said, this true Dhamma will last 500 years. Not that after 500 years, you don't have the true Dhamma. But what the Buddha meant was, after 500 years, false Dhamma will appear. And the Buddha mentioned this in several suttas. In the Kasapa Sangyutta, Chapter 16, I think, of the Sangyutta Nikaya, 16.13, the Buddha said, The true Dhamma will not disappear as long as the false Dhamma has not emerged. But when the false Dhamma arises, the Buddha said, then the true Dhamma will disappear. And the Buddha said, it is the foolish people here who caused the false Dhamma to appear. He was talking to the monks, to the Sangha. So what he meant was, it is the Sangha, it is the monks themselves uh, who create the false Dhamma in the future. Future monks will create the false Dhamma. And that will slowly cause the true Dhamma to disappear. Also, the Buddha mentioned in another sutta, in the Sangyutta Nikaya 20.7, Upama Sangyutta, the Buddha said uh, that in the future the false Dhamma will appear and then uh, people will find it difficult to distinguish between the true Dhamma and the false Dhamma. And because people find it difficult to distinguish, uh, then people will not have that interest uh, in the Dhamma. The Buddha also gave a simile of false gold. The Buddha said nowadays, there is no false gold. Everybody wants to buy gold. But one day, false gold will appear. And when false gold appears, people find it difficult to distinguish between true gold and false gold. And then people will be alarmed. They're not buying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, since the Buddha said the true Dhamma will last 500 years, uh, we have to know what was the true Dhamma within that 500 years. And luckily, we have Emperor Asoka. Emperor Asoka lived about 250 years after the Buddha's passing away. And he had so much faith in the Buddha that he wanted the people to know the Buddha's teachings. So he got uh, the words of the Buddha carved on stone pillars. And he erected these stone pillars on the roadside for people to read. And now, after over 2,000 years, uh, archaeologists have dug up these stone pillars. Uh, and they find, during Emperor Asoka's time, the Dhamma was only five Nikayas. Diga Nikaya, long discourses of the Buddha, consisting of 34 suttas, long suttas. Majima Nikaya, consisting of 152 medium-length discourses. Sangyutta Nikaya, over 2,000 short discourses, uh, topically, topically um, arranged. And then Anguttara Nikaya, over 2,000 suttas, numerically arranged. And then the last one was the Kudaka Nikaya. Kudaka means minor, smaller collection. But nowadays, uh, they have added, they have kept adding books to it, so has, it has become a major collection. Uh, in uh, Thailand and Sri Lanka, there are 15 books in the Kudaka Nikaya. But in the Burmese tradition, in 1956, uh, they had a Sangha council and they added three more books inside there. And all the monks knew that those three books were not the words of the Buddha, and yet they put those books there. Uh, so it shows uh, how people keep adding the books. So you investigate the books in the Kudaka Nikaya, you find only six uh, can truly be accepted uh, because it is it conforms to the earlier four Nikayas. Uh. These six books are the Dhammapada, Udana, Itivuttaka, Sutta Nipata, Theragata, Therigata. Only these six books are reliable. So that is the true Dhamma. 
the five Nikayas, earliest five Nikayas of the Buddha. Then we find exactly 500 years after the Buddha's passing away, eh? we have later books emerging like the Mahayana Sutras and the Abhidhamma and commentaries. 900 years after the Buddha's passing away, the Visuddhi Maga appeared. Nowadays, some monks teach according to the Visuddhi Maga. You find in these later books uh, that they have some Dhamma, that is why people are attracted to it. But at the same time, they add a little Adhamma. And that little Adhamma, they say things that the Buddha did not say. For example, in Mahayana Sutras, they talk about the seventh and the eighth consciousness. But in the early Buddha's discourses, he only talked about six consciousness. So they created the seventh and the eighth consciousness in Mahayana. And then similarly with the Abhidhamma. In Theravada, we have the seven books of the Abhidhamma. The first three or four is okay. La. It conforms to the early suttas. But the later, uh, the last three books, uh, they see a lot of things that the Buddha did not say. Talk about Kalapas, Javana, Bhavanga, Patisandhi, Chitta, Chutti, Chitta, and all these things uh, that the Buddha did not say. But then, these people who wrote these later books, uh, saying a lot of things that the Buddha did not, did not say, uh, they did not study the words of the Buddha in the five Nikayas enough. If they had studied enough, uh, they would know in the Diga Nikaya Sutta 29, the Buddha said uh, his teachings of the holy life uh, are perfect and complete. If the Buddha's teachings uh, are perfect and complete, it means you cannot make it more perfect. You cannot make it more complete. The Buddha also said uh, that if you think you want to add to his words, uh, you don't see his Dhamma. If you don't see his Dhamma, you don't have right view. You're not an Arya. Only when you see the Dhamma, vision of the Dhamma, which is Dhamma Chaku, Pa Yen. Only if you see the Dhamma, understand the Dhamma, you have right view. So all the people who wrote the later books, uh, they, they are not Arya, according to the Buddha. If they appreciated the suttas of the Buddha, they would know that it's more than enough. Since the Buddha said uh, that his teachings are perfect and complete, uh, it also means uh, that he is the top class Buddha. You cannot find another Buddha whose teachings are superior to our Buddha Gautama. Because